Hi sewing friends, this is Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles. One of the blazers I made in September um, is called the Bespoke Blazer from Sew to Grow Patterns. And I promised I had a separate vlog and I do. <laughs> so I'm going to show you this, um, this jacket in a bit more detail. Um, now I'm going to say at first, the first thing I'm going to say, the fabric choice was just terrible. <laughs> Um, I had this piece of linen and um, it's really bad quality, like it's a linen blend. It's really nice and soft and drapey and stuff, but it just does not hold its shape for this make. So um, first off, you can see this collar hangs really nicely, but this one is like stretched out and just wrinkly there. Yeah, I don't know how, what I can do to fix that. I've tried everything. Um, I've pressed it to death, I don't know, but anyway, this was a test, let's call it a twirl, <laughs> although it's quite nice for a twirl, but yeah, I know I know the different, what I have to change to make it again, because I really love it, I just need a bit of quality fabric, right? <laughs> so, um, this blazer doesn't, I, I made quite a few changes, because this blazer didn't call for lining, it just called for lining on the front, the front piece, and then here had you have just a piece of lining like that. And I've actually seen some jackets ready to wear that just aligned like from here, like the middle of the arm side, just there. And I'm like, why? Why would you like just, I don't know. <laughs> I would just line the whole thing, you know? So I filmed um, the process. Now the, the blaze, the, the, the pattern called you to cut four pieces of this front piece because this is visible, see? But I didn't have enough linen to cut out four pieces of the front piece. I just had enough to cut two. <laughs> so I drafted a facing piece and then I attached on uh, lining fabric and I did film how to do that and how I lined it. So have a look at that. This is the front pattern piece and this calls for um, a lining. But because the collar will go like that, you're going to see what's the lining, uh, the fabric on the outside. And I don't have enough to cut four pieces of this. So I've copied that onto there and I've created a facing. So that will enclose the seam because it's curved and this will be lining fabric. So when I cut this, these sides already have seam allowance up there on the shoulder and there. But not this. So I'm going to add on one centimeter when I cut off with um, the fabric the final result of my facing shenanigans so this is the lining piece and that is the main fabric so when this turns like that you're actually going to see that so that's the visible part and I put that funky snake print satin um, for the lining I'm going to line the whole jacket not just the, the, the top of the back like the pattern calls for and I'm going to show you where I got that lining fabric from. Check out, that is the snake print satin pyjama pants I bought in the markets. I think this was a 3XL, so that's quite a lot of fabric there. And I was able to get all the lining from just one pant, one side. So I've got another one to play and make a lining for something else. Here on the inside you can see that one centimeter seam allowance I left for the lining and for the main fabric. And I've done a tiny top stitching there. You, maybe you can't even see it. I can, but it just helps the lining lay flat. Usually satin bubbles up. It doesn't, like when you press it, it doesn't press flat. So when I use satin, I always do that tiny top stitching there. I don't know if you just heard that thunder, but it is pouring and it's thundering today. This uh, pattern only wants you to line up to here so there is a lining piece and it's just up to there and you might have seen that on some jackets where you just line up to here and then there's nothing else but I don't really agree with that look especially for linen I don't know I just like it lined so <laughs> I just cut the same pieces um, as the main fabric I just cut them twice and I've got them ready to go with the collar the linen collar at the top I'm standing on a chair so you can see maybe better. Um, here are the two front pieces. You can see I've done another arm side dart there to um, get rid of the armhole gaping. As this was not supposed to be sleeveless, 
yeah, I, I can always account for some gaping there. That's just one easy way to fix that. Here's the back. And here, I've already stitched the lining to the main piece. So my side seams are flapping around. That's always the last thing I do when I line a jacket like this. So here's the other side of my collar. Um, I'm going to turn this around so you can see the other side. Here's the lining bit, that's the back and that's the front where you can see all the facing there of the main fabric and then there's the lining piece. So I've already, um, I've already done all that sewing around the arm side. I've already done the little snips so I can turn this around and I've stitched all that around the collar there and it's all snipped as well so I just have to turn this around do um, all the under stitching and then do the side seams it's looking somewhat like the jacket now um, I've turned everything around I've done all the under stitching you can see the facing and the lining in there uh, here on the collar piece I've done the under stitching at the back here pretty happy around here I've done the under stitching on the arm side so the lining is not going to peep out. Now I have to stitch um, the side seams and that's it. So you can see the process is quite similar to how I lined the Coco jacket so I don't sew on the side seams. Um, you, just, you just sew up the shoulder seams and leave everything open and then attach the lining to the main fabric right sides together and pin 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 you know you saw that I did. Anyway, this jacket has um, a really cool collar. You see, it looks like, what's the name of this collar? When it just comes like that, I'll try to think. I just cannot remember. And I've made this before with the Morris blazer and the, with, with the Victoria jacket blazer. Anyway, it has that type of collar that's not like a notched lapel sort of thing. So it's one piece. But the way that it's designed is so clever because it makes it so easy. Um, I didn't have enough fabric to do this part, so I did it with this creamy colored linen. But see that collar piece there? You just attach that on, and then you have that, and then you attach the side seam, um, I mean the, the shoulder seam in one go after that. And it's so much easier than that shape, you know, like when you have that square, and you have to pivot and all that stuff that all those other blazers have. I found this brilliant. That's how it looks there, has that little seam. And you can see that little seam meets the shoulder seam there when you wear it. Uh, I just found this design brilliant, it's just a brilliant design uh, and so easy to make, you know. Um, I love this jacket, I think it's really cool. Um, it, that shape at the front is just really awesome. I think it's really flattering. Um, and I'm definitely going to make this again um, with a better quality fabric, you know, that's going to hold its shape better. <laughs> um, I did hand stitch the C, the, the hem, sorry, it was a tiny hem. And then this lining is the same as the Coco jacket, it has a little bit of ease on the length. So it doesn't have any pulling. So yeah, I really like this and I'm definitely making it again. I highly recommend this um, this blazer uh, pattern. It's really, really nice. Um, have a look at the formal pictures. <laughs> size did I cut? Uh, I think I would size up for the next one. Um, but you can see it doesn't really meet the center for me, although it's not supposed to, but it is a bit... I really like the shape of it. See, it does define your waist. And I love how this hangs, you know. I think this side is fine, it's perfect, but this side just, yeah, I just don't like that. Um, I'm gonna wear it anyway. <laughs> so yeah this is my jacket I really love it um, it's 
going to serve me well because the colors just match anything really. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed seeing this and see you in the next vlog very soon. Bye!